Uh, I don't know about the old YouTube algorithm for this one here because we're getting pretty nerdy in today's video. And if there's people out there who actually found this video, who clicked on this video and are actually interested in instrumental mandolin records, then I'm so excited because that means that there's other mandolin nerds out there like me. And to be perfectly candid here, this is a very subjective list. These are albums that I've just listened to a lot personally and albums that have influenced me a lot as a mandolin player. And since there are so many albums out there that feature mandolin and would be great candidates for a list like this, I decided to set some kind of arbitrary parameters to help cut down the options a bit more. So for this top 10 list, we're only looking at albums that are primarily instrumental. Pretty niche territory. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of these recordings won't be surprises to folks who've been around the mandolin community for a while, but I hope there's a couple new ones in there for you as well. And again, this is subjective, it's not definitive. We all have our very strong opinions about mandolin music, which is great. My hope for making this video is just to keep us all listening, to keep us all learning, and to share some of my favorite musical experience with you guys, and hopefully learn from y'all as well, because I'd love for you guys to comment in the section below about what your top 10 favorite list is. But we'll start with my list here, and I'll be sure to drop listening links below so you can check out all these records as we go through them. We'll start with number 10, work our way to number one just for fun, and let's dive in. And number 10 on my list is the David Grisman Quintet album Hot Dog from 1978. And this record features kind of like the golden era of the DGQ, which featured you know David Grisman on mandolin, Mike Marshall on twin mando, then you've got Daryl Anger on fiddle, you have Tony Rice on guitar, and Todd Phillips on bass. And this record has a few guest musician appearances, including Stefan Grappelli on fiddle for a couple tracks. Of course, you would have to include a record from David Grisman on a top 10 album list like this because his influence on the mandolin community has been so huge. And I include this one because it might be my favorite David Grisman record of all time. Listening back to it now, thinking about this being from all the way back in 1978, it was just so ahead of its time. It definitely crossed the bridge between the gypsy jazz community and the bluegrass community in ways that hadn't happened before. But not only that, I think this record has some of the best playing that I've heard from Tony Rice and David Grisman from that era. It's just some amazing solos and the energy on all these recordings is so exciting. A few of my favorite tracks from this record include Dog's Bull, which is such a fun tune to play, especially if you have friends who know the harmony parts and can play along with you. Then there's also Minor Swing, which has become quite a jam classic in bluegrass circles. And this one actually is referring to the original Minor Swing that Django and Stefan recorded back in the day. But David's version is a little bit different, right? It's in a different key. It's in D minor, and they added a bridge to the song, which um, apparently Stefan didn't say anything about it, even when he recorded it on this track, which is hilarious. And then another one of my favorites is the Neon Tetra track that Tony Rice wrote. But moving on to number nine here, we have Instrumentals Volume 1 from Jacob Jolliffe. This record was recorded 40 years after that David Grisman quintet in 2018 and features some of my favorite players on the scene today, which include Jacob Jolliffe on mandolin, of course. You have Alex Hargraves playing and fiddle, then you have Stash Weislouch on guitar and Jeff Picker playing bass. And even though this is more of a recent record, I include it on my list here because it's definitely influenced me a lot since hearing it. You know, listening to this record feels like you're just kind of staring into the face of the future of the mandolin. <laughs> and I say that because the players who recorded on this album are some of the most technically proficient cats on the bluegrass scene today, but they have such a unique character about them. They don't sound like copycats of other players. They just sound really genuine and unique on their own, which is so cool. Not only that, Jacob's compositions are next level in interesting chord progressions, arrangements, arrangements and complexity. It's almost a little hard to listen to, but every time I come back to it, it makes me excited to play mandolin again. A few of my favorite hits from this album include the first track, which is Storming Heaven, some really cool, unique contrasting parts in there, some chord melody ideas that are amazing. And then there's also Shearson Crosses the Rocky Mountains, which is a really cool, fast sounding minor melody that I really need to go learn how to play. Then there's also one of my favorites, which is Waiting on Gravy, which is just a tempest of double stops I can hardly imagine anyone actually playing on the mandolin. So for number eight, I imagine this is on a lot of mandolin players' top 10 list. Here we have Walk Along John from John Reichman. This album is from 2013, and one of my favorite things about it is just the stellar lineup that we have here. Not only is John playing mandolin throughout the entire album, but you also have some guest artists that include Chris Thiele, Chris Cool, Annie Stanenek, Tony Trishka, Bruce Molsky, the list keeps going on and on. And a couple other highlights for this album. One, it's just such happy music to listen to. You know, the compositions are unique. The melodies are memorable. They're earworms that get stuck in your head again and again. There's a lot of tunes here that people have learned as standards in the jam community. And the tones on this album are just buttery, really beautiful stuff. 
My favorite tracks on this album are the first track, which is It's Been Real, includes an amazing harmony duet from Chris Thiele. Then you have a beautiful waltz called A Prairie Jewel that John wrote for his wife. And then there's also Little Pine Siskin, which is another tune that's becoming a jam favorite these days. Number seven is a classic here. This is Uncommon Ritual from Edgar Meyer, amazing bass player. And on this record, he's also joined by Bela Fleck on the banjo and guitar, and Mike Marshall on mandolin, mandocello, and also some guitar as well. This album dates back to 1997, and I think I must have been five years old when this album came out. Wow. This record definitely leans more towards the chamber music side of things, which was really unique for the time. I think there's maybe only a few records around this era that started to combine classical music with roots music like this and the compositions on this album are just very interesting not only that but i imagine this music is very complex and difficult to play and i've heard from mike marshall himself about the session for this album how they would do 50 60 takes of each track just to make sure that they got the right one that's a lot of dedication. <laughs> there's some bangers on this album that definitely blur that genre line here. Some of my favorites are Seesaw, one of the first tracks. And then you also have this really interesting tune called Chromium Piccolinate, if I'm saying that right. Really interesting stuff. Some chordal harmony going on there, which is very unique for bluegrass. And then probably my all-time favorite on this record is Child's Play. Just a really beautiful melody and fantastic performance. On to number six here, which is the self-titled Grant Gordy record from 2010. I'm sure you know Grant Gordy. He's a fantastic hybrid jazz, bluegrass guitarist. And on this album, he has an amazing lineup, including Paul Coward on bass, you got Alex Hargraves playing Phil, Jamie Stone on banjo, and none other than Dominic Leslie playing mandolin. I've heard some folks describe this record as the next obvious step away from the David Grisman quintet. And listening back to it now, it's totally true. It's definitely got the same sentiment as some of those records, but they're taking everything to that next level. More complex compositions, arrangements, really amazing intricate performances and just some beautiful recordings at the end of the day. But the album's not derivative at all. It has such a unique sound and I really wish there were more folks out there making music like this because there's not really much out there besides this. My favorite tracks on this album are Pterodactyl, fantastic name for a tune. And there's also Little Grapes. There's some really cool intricate mandolin parts on there from Dominic. And then listening to Digging Hargraves again recently, Wow, that, that track really does it for me. <laughs> All right, well, we're halfway through here. And at number five, I've got live duets from Mike Marshall and Chris Thiele. This one dates back to 2006. And obviously, the two instrumentalists on this are Mike Marshall and Chris Thiele. <laughs> the highlight for me on this one is definitely the interplay between these two monster mandolin players. You can just feel them feeding off of one another, reacting to each other in the moment and egging each other on in this really cool way. And because this is a live album, you can really tune into that interaction at a deeper level. And I have no idea how they play these super complex, weird compositions live so flawlessly because it's pretty much perfect. And there are some kind of weird tracks on here. I imagine if this was someone's first experience listening to a mandolin, they'd be like, what on earth is going on? But I think even they would be able to catch on to this infectious energy that was going through these recordings as it must have been an incredible thing to witness live. Some favorites of mine from this record include Shoulda Seen It Coming, which is a really interesting and compelling composition at the top of this album. Then there's also Byron's, which is just this crazy balls to the wall fiddle tune. And you can really hear these two musicians stretch out on this fantastic tune. Then there's also a really fun Bulgarian dance tune called Sede Danka, which is in a meter, which I can't even count in. I think it's 13, seven or something like that. No, that can't be right. It's in 25, I was way off. <laughs> but for number four, we're coming back to some good old bluegrass with Noam Pekilny plays Kenny Baker plays Bill Monroe. That's a mouthful. <laughs> you guys probably know there's a watershed bluegrass instrumental record called Kenny Baker plays Bill Monroe. Kenny Baker was Bill Monroe's probably most popular fiddle player back in the day. And Bill Monroe showed up to the session that day and recorded all these instrumental Bill Monroe tunes with Kenny Baker and the crew. And uh, all those tunes have become jam classics. Well, fast forward to 2013 when banjo player with the Punch Brothers, Noam Pekilny, decides to make a remake of this album and calls it Noam Pekilny plays Kenny Baker plays Bill Monroe. And this album is fantastic. It's so good. <laughs> on this record, we got Rodney McCurry laying down some amazing Monroe style mandolin. On top of that, you got folks like Brian Sutton playing guitar, Stuart Duncan on the fiddle, and none other than Noam Pekilny playing banjo. The big talking points for this one are the groove. The groove on this record is absolutely phenomenal. If you've ever tried playing along with this album, chopping along with Ronnie McCurry, slotting into that rhythm section, it is a 
a tangible experience. You can just feel the energy flowing through these amazing musicians. But what I love most about this album is that all these tunes are jam standards. They're old classics, but they're played with a modern interpretation by folks who have such a respect for the tradition, but are definitely leaning forward and pushing the envelope in each one of their instrumental categories. Top three tracks for me are Lonesome Moonlight Waltz, beautiful melody, beautiful mandolin playing on there, Big Sandy River, the fiddle solo on there is absolutely phenomenal. And then of course, Wheel Haas. How can folks play that fast? I have no idea. <laughs> All right, top three. And number three might be a surprise to some folks because this is one that I guess doesn't really get a whole lot of mention in the mandolin community. This is Jeremy Kittle's record Worlds from 2018. Jeremy Kittle is a fantastic Scottish fiddle player. He also does some crazy jazz stuff too. And on this record, he combines a crazy unique cast of players, including Simon Crispin on the hammer dulcimer, Nat Smith on the cello, Quinn Bashand on the guitar, and then Josh Pinkham on the mandolin. I don't even know how to classify the genre of this record because it's definitely coming from that Scottish root sound, but it's also leaning towards chamber music. They do a fantastic recording of the E major prelude from the Bach violin partita with full band counterpoint and arrangement. It sounds amazing, but there's also some jazz, there's bluegrass, there's all sorts of weird things mixed into this. You wouldn't think it would work, but when you listen to it, it'll blow you away. Since this record came out, this might be the record I've listened to the most, period. Not, not just mandolin records. It's been on my playlist for forever, and I just come back to it again and again because there's uh, an intellect about it, but also an emotive feel to it, which really gets me every time. And the performance on this album is just so top notch. They're a really tight band. Josh's mandolin playing adds so much to the mix. The dynamics of the band, the ebb and the flow of the music, everyone's just so in sync. It's really amazing to witness. A few of my favorite tracks from this record include Panda, which is kind of like a reel that has some unique phrase links and multiple sections that develop throughout the entire arrangement. Then there's also Alpina, which is more akin to a jig, some beautiful performances there. And then Chrysalis will actually blow your socks off. It is such an exciting track. But for number two here, we have a record that probably should be on every modern mandolin player's top 10 list. This is Tales from the Acoustic Planet Volume 2, The Bluegrass Sessions from Bela Fleck. It's a long title. <laughs> We'll have to see over time if Bela's new record, My Bluegrass Heart, will take this album's spot on my list because it is a fantastic record. But for now, The Bluegrass Sessions definitely takes the cake for me. And I think this record kind of set the gold standard for all modern bluegrass instrumental recordings that have happened afterwards. Because for one, the compositions are amazing. They sit right in this sweet spot between intellectual and complex and interesting and simple and relatable on the other side. And not only that, Bela brings the best out of all the musicians that he records with. You can just tell everyone's just bringing their top game here on this album. And the cast for this one is just ginormous. You have Sam Bush playing mandolin throughout. Then you have folks like Stuart Duncan, Jerry Douglas, Mark Schatz, Tony Rice, you know, those guys. And then you also have special guest appearances from Vassar Clements, from John Hartford, Earl Scruggs. Bela got just about everyone. Favorite tracks in this one by far would be Buffalo Nickel. I've never heard a more bittersweet melody played on the banjo before. Then you have Spanish Point. That guitar intro from Tony Rice has become iconic. It's almost like a, a trope at this point, which is amazing. And then we have Overgrown Waltz, which is an absolutely beautiful composition. All right, and number one here is none other than Not All Who Wonder Are Lost by Chris Thiele. This album just has some real personal connection to me. I remember getting this record for Christmas it may have been the same year that I first started playing mandolin. And I remember putting that CD in my little boom box and sitting with my family as we did our Christmas puzzle and just having my mind absolutely blown by what was possible with the mandolin. <laughs> this record came out a couple years after the Bluegrass Sessions from Bela in 2001. It features a pretty similar cast. You have Bela on the banjo, you have Jerry Douglas on dobro, Brian Sutton on guitar, Stuart Duncan on fiddle, and Edgar Meyer playing bass. And I would venture to guess that this record has also found its place in many other mandolin players' hearts because the arrangements on this album are just so interesting and compelling. The playing from all the musicians is just top notch. I don't know, I have nothing but good things to say about this album. That first track, Song for Young Queen, just really gives me this kind of bittersweet reminiscence of what it was like when I first picked up the mandolin, the joy that I had, you know, thinking back to, you know, the world of possibilities that were before me at that time. And then there's also beautiful melodies like Raining at Sunset, Bridal Veil Falls, you have the amazing Wolf Creek Pass, that mandolin solo on there is executed perfectly. And um, then one of my favorite tracks, of course, is 
the Riddles in the Dark duet with Bela Fleck. I've just never heard anything quite like that recorded with the mandolin before. So I definitely recommend you check out that link for the album in the description below here, as well as the links for all the other albums, because they're really worthwhile listening to. So good for inspiration, for learning, for pushing us to that next level. And this list might very well change depending on the year or the day or how I'm feeling even. So take it all with a grain of salt. There's so many great mandolin records out there worth listening to. And again, I'd love to hear what your top 10 favorite list is in the comments below. And even just making this list, I'm pretty inspired to make more videos like this. There's so many things that we could do. We could do top 10 traditional bluegrass mandolin albums out there, top 10 singing mandolin records out there, Irish mandolin records. We'll have to, we'll have to do more videos. <laughs> And if you want to see more mandolin videos like this in your life, please consider liking and subscribing here. It goes a long way to making all these videos possible. And all the patronage over on Patreon is so, so appreciated. I am just so thankful for you patrons who are already out there watching this video. You can find out more if you're not already signed up by clicking the link in the description below. There's resources over there like PDF transcriptions, tablature, standard notation, backing tracks, all sorts of stuff. So check it out if you're interested. But that's it for now. If you want to keep the mandolin videos coming, check out these other videos here on screen, and I'll see you in the next one.